Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series on homeopathy with our beloved Dr. Pachakavgar. Today we decided we'd speak on adenoids. Yes. Wonderful. As a singer, this is important also. <laughs> adenoids in a, is a lymphoid tissue which is based in the retropharyngeal fossa, just the, the wall of the pharynx, throat. It's a lymphoid tissue everyone has and lymphoid tissue is like a guard, like tonsils. Tonsils also lymph lymphoid tissue, same way adenoids. But why were tonsils always removed for us in the West at least? No, they, they earlier, were, earlier that was fashion. Somewhere in 1960 and around that, like they used to feel that it becomes a focus of infection. In fact, this lymphoid tissue is like a guard. So whenever there, there is a chance of infection, this lymphoid tissue catches that infection, develops inflammation and, and resolves it by taking it in lymph nodes. So when the doctor saw inflammation, that's when they want to cut it out. Yeah, so they thought that like uh, it is being inflamed again and again, so it is more susceptible and they thought of removing it. But now even the ENT surgeons have realized that actually you are creating more complications. So infection has no barrier now. It, if you remove tonsils or if you remove adenoids, then the infection can directly go to bronchioles and lungs. So there would be no barricade for infection. So adenoids is something which is uh, present in the retropharyngeal fossa in the sense it is clearly at the junction of nose. Both nasions open in the throat and there it is located. So enlargement, hypertrophy of this lymphoid tissue leads to congestion and nose block. So children we have seen, children with adenoids, they get their nose blocked at night, especially at night. Especially in supine position it gets congested and anywhere block means there would be a congestion of mucosa and wherever there is congestion and stagnation there would be secondary infection. So these things follow and as the Throat is like a junction box for opening of uh, nasions, nose, ears and then the mouth. So in this junction, if there is congestion, definitely this congestion will secondarily cause congestion in the ear also. That eustachian tube which connects throat with the ear, that tube also gets congested and then it will lead to eustachian tube congestion then in turn lead to mustoid. It is again a sinus behind the ear. So that mustoiditis and so many complications. So we have seen children with adenoids, they develop so many complications like chronic nasal obstruction. They get uh, middle ear infections or ear pain. And many times we find that their even uh, ear drum gets perforated. So eardrum perforation, what we call chronic otitis media, where, where the middle ear infection becomes so chronic that continuously there is a drainage of pus. And sometimes if this drainage doesn't occur effectively, you know, it has vicinity to the brain. So it can even become fatal if it is not vented out, vent out by body. So, this adenoids is a simple phenomena. It can be treated conservatively. In homeopathy, we have wonderful remedies where we can treat at a very younger age. We find children and especially they get a nose block. And typically, typically these children, they just start breathing through mouth because their nose is blocked. So, during sleep, like that they will keep open, even while talking and all, they, they breathe through mouth. So this is typical adenoids, it's a lymphoid tissue, a simple thing. We have uh, many remedies like Barata muriaticum, it is a barium chloride, Barata muriaticum, it's a wonderful remedy. Even we have one remedy like Aurum muriaticum, which is a heavy metal, Aurum, Aurum is a gold, heavy metal, so muriate, muriate of that. That also is a wonderful remedy. 
then we have one remedy is like tuberculinum tuberculinum is a nosode prepared from tubercular uh, lesion so that nosode also uh, helps wonderfully well but of course in homeopathy we g- don't give remedy on the basis of diagnosis that the child has adenoids and give this remedy you know here what we do is we individualize the um, person and depending upon the symptomatology we match with the remedy so it can be tuberculinum it can be barata muraticum it can be barata cab it can be silicia it can be marxol so but these various remedies would be indicated but definitely it can be tackled with homeopathy conservatively how does yes. it, how does it work see it works like this mainly what happens you know this congestion is again because of the defense now now when effect ideal conditions where there is infection this lymphoid tissue should arrest that infection confine it to itself lead it to the lymph node and resolve it that means there should be healing by resolution so that there is no scarring or hypertrophy or growth means for say there is infection for one week uh, the tissue gets inflamed then it is carried to the uh, lymph node and then it is resolved and then everything comes to normalcy everything reverses that is what we call healing by resolution so nothing nothing should be remaining there or there should be no growth even tonsils we see everyone's tonsillar tissue that is a lymphoid tissue is active it it arrests the infection it prevents the further multiplication of bacterial infection but at the same time it resolves completely means there is no enlargement or something but in some people there is a tendency that this fibrosis doesn't resolve it, go, it goes it, so there is physical structural enlargement accumulation of tissue and there it creates a problem that suppose the adenoids they get inflamed and the the inflammation leaves some sort of scarring a fibrous tissue and this fibrous tissue if it doesn't get absorbed then it creates a physical structure there which will obstruct and this post nasal obstruction in the retropharyngeal fossa we, that is what we call adenoids in that case it starts giving secondary effects like congestion in the eustachian tube then uh, stagnation of fluid there is no effective drainage see our ent passage nose throat and ear this ent passage with internal connections secretes around 2 liters of mucus uh, in a day but we don't realize it because this is being recycled so it is continuously under circulation and see attached are those sinuses the the maxillary sinuses uh, the frontal sinuses and even the mastoids and these sinuses they also are filled with mucus it's a, like a cavity and if there is congestion and secondary infection then occurs the phenomena called sinusitis it can be pan sinusitis means all sinuses are inflamed or it can be selectively it can be frontal sinusitis it can be maxillary sinusitis but in adenoids commonest is mastoiditis mastoid sinuses are congested and otitis media is a known complication then i have seen cases where they get foul smelling discharge from the ear and and we have seen the hearing is not affected but there will be continuous discharge in some people even hearing can be affected and when we treat it accordingly the discharges come the the resolution comes we have seen even the fibrosis also resolves and it reverses and we have seen many people what we call kissing tonsils generally whenever they remove tonsils the surgeon used to remove adenoids also because you know both are same lymphoid tissue mm-hmm. so they would say that in future again it would get enlarged so when we are removing tonsils you remove even adenoids also but it's not easy to remove everything some remnant will remain and that again will bother so much that the surgeon as well as the patient repents for operating it so nowadays even ent surgeons have gone conservative they also feel that so far as possible don't go for surgical removal and and conserve it 
treat it we can treat the susceptibility what they call it in the form of allergy so called so they they undertake desensitization they manage then in in ayurveda they they give or in yoga also they give jalaniti jalaniti is from one nostril you you inject water and with the gravity you vent it out from the other nostril so that jalaniti also helps even breathing exercises are help but the best thing is the the lifestyle is very important especially the sleep you know the, the circadian rhythm if child is asked to follow and and proper sleep at proper time with proper duration is there and and digestion is good then healing in this adenoids is easier but definitely even with the voice you know the when the child speaks with adenoids one can make out that there is a nasal voice that that nose is completely blocked that we can see we have seen even snoring is common in the children who have this adenoids enlarged so it's like a hypertrophic uh, retropharyngeal lymphoid tissue and nothing else it's common and every throat has uh, this lymphoid tissue with the treatment how long does it take to heal see the see what happens you know in been uh, treating this there are grades of uh, adenoids like if if the adenoids is at functional level that for a while it gets congested and then it comes back then it, the treatment would be very quick it would be like within few weeks but if it is a chronic thing where where there is lot of fibrosis accumulated structural phenomena is there which has established in that case it may take months or even some years and and then more than that if the child has secondary complications like like otitis media where where there is a discharge from the ear then that complication again we have to primarily get rid of this adenoids and then release the congestion in eustachian tubes and then take care of mid ear where there would be no congestion there would be no secondary infection and whatever pus is there it should be drained off properly and then it should be maintained sterile so it may take a few years but it no other way we have to go for it so we, there is no more any recommendation for surgery nowadays even even the surgeons are convinced that that surgery is not the solution at all earlier to it used to be fashion if the child is not growing physical growth is poor they used to say remove tonsils that is the cause of um, stunted height then then if you have otitis media like ear discharge from ear they would say it's because of adenoids and even if it is just marginally hypertrophied they would undertake tonsillectomy and uh, this adenoids to be resected empirically they used to do it but nowadays even even the surgeons have realized that it's not the remedy at all rather it is more harmful